Welcome back, my dear followers. This is a new episode of the history of the American Mafia, a podcast brought to you by Fabio Fabiano and translated and read by me, Grace Cutlisi. I hope you enjoy today's new episode. Vito Bonventre and Cola Schirò, the origins of the Bonanno family. Originally, the Bonanno Mafia family was led by Vito Bonventre and Cola Schirò. You'll remember Vito Bonventre from the podcast about the good killers I did previously and the notorious fight between those from Castellammare and the Bugellato family. Bonventre was born in Castellammare del Golfo, Sicily, in 1875. He was Joseph Bonanno's second cousin and arrived in the USA in 1906. He became a successful smuggler in Brooklyn and a prominent member of Nicola Schirò's crime family. Temporarily, he probably was also Schirò's successor for a short time at the summit of the eponymous Mafia family. Vito Bonventre seems to have played an important role in the elimination of members of the Buccellato family in the States. In 1921, in New Jersey, he was also suspected of the murder of Camillo Cagliozzo. And you can hear all about that in the Good Killer's case. According to Bonanno, Bonventre became the richest member after Coleschiro in the Brooklyn family named after him in the late 1920s. He was targeted by the boss of bosses Joe Masseria and his followers who worked to kill a revolt by the Castellammarese Mafia in Brooklyn. He was assassinated outside his home garage in July the 15th, 1930. His murder and that of Detroit's Castellammarese leader Gaspari Milazzo a month earlier were to be considered the beginning of the Castellammarese War. Now, let's talk about Cola Schiro, or Nicolò Schiro, as uh, was his full name, but he would call himself Cola. He was born on the 2nd of September 1872 in Rocca in the province of Palermo in Sicily, from Matteo Schiro and Maria Antonia Rizzuto. He inherited his grandfather's name, who descended from the Albanian community Contessa Entellina and was the mayor of Rocca Menca in 1840. A few years later, Schiro's family moved to his mother's hometown in nearby Campo Reale. One of his cousins, Paolo Orlando, also born in Campo Reale, would become a mafia boss in the large Italian community in the French colony of Tunis. Schirò emigrated to the United States in 1897 and in 1902 he settled in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. He was arrested in 1905 for keeping a butcher shop open on Sundays, which was against the New York laws. In 1912, Schirò replaced Sebastiano di Gaetano an immigrant from the Sicilian town Castellammare del Golfo as head of the local mafia in the Williamsburg neighborhood. Salvatore Clemente, a secret service informant in the Morello gang, reported that Di Gaetano was resigning out of fear. This may have influenced by the fact that Schiro's cousin, Paolo Orlando, had arrived in Brooklyn, reportedly forced to leave Tunis. Orlando remained in Brooklyn until the end of of the First World War. Meanwhile, another New York City Mafia boss, Salvatore d'Aquila, was awarded the title of Boss of Bosses by the other Mafia bosses. Clemente told Secret Services that in November 1913, Schirò was allied with the Morello gang in conflict with d'Aquila. It seems that a truce was stipulated between the factions by the end of the year that lasted until May 23, 1914, with the murder of Fortunato Lomonte, ordered by D'Aquila. Lomonte had taken over the Morello gang after the 1910 conviction of Giuseppe Morello for counterfeiting. 
The killing resumed soon after, and Skiro maintained a neutral position, siding neither with D'Aquila nor with the Morello gang. Skiro managed his gang in a neutral way, conducting his criminal activity mainly among Sicilian immigrants, avoiding the attention of the authorities and collaborating with other non-Sicilian gangs. He developed close relationships with the local business leaders and political leaders. In fact, he was a member of the board of directors of the local United Italian American Democratic Club. Schirò became a naturalized US citizen in 1914. On the 11th of November, 1917, two members of the Schirò gang, Antonio Manzara and Antonino Di Benedetto, were shot dead near the intersection of the North 5th and Roebling Street in Brooklyn. One of the two gunmen, Antonio Bassino, was arrested near the scene, but the other, the Detroit mobster, Giuseppe Buccellato, fled. Buccellato killed Mazzara and Di Benedetto after the two refused to reveal the whereabouts of Schirò and Stefano Magadino. Assuming that Magadino was behind the murder of his brother and his Detroit associate, Felice Buccellato. Due to a feud between the Mafia clans, Magadino and Buccellato returned to their hometown Castellammare del Golfo in Sicily. Failing to locate and kill Buccellato, the Schirò gang shot and killed his partner Francesco Finazzo at Finazzo's house which was located in the exact same corner where Mazzara and Di Benedetta had been murdered a month earlier. Some of the victims named by Fontana were former supporters of Salvatore Lo Iacono, who had been supported by Salvatore d'Aquila to take over the Morello crime family. Lo Iacono was assassinated on the 10th of December 1920, shortly after Giuseppe Morello's release. According to a March 1st, 1921 article in the New York Evening World, seven men had sworn revenge on Loyacano's body during his funeral. Within a few months, of three of them, Salvatore Mauro, Angelo Patricola and Giuseppe Granatelli, were murdered, and a fourth, Angelo Lagatuta, was seriously shot and wounded. Fontana claimed that they were victims of the good killers. But, however, he did not know that La Catuga had survived. Morello had made a pact with Schirò, his previous ally against D'Aquila, to kill the supporters of Lo Iacono. Schirò was very reserved and took care not to get in the papers, and was never arrested for a crime during his time as boss. Several former members of the Schirò's crime family later became gang leaders in other cities. Frank Lanza in San Francisco, Stefano Magadino in Buffalo and Gaspari Messina in New England. Schirò ran a lucrative alcohol smuggling trade. On July 14, 1921, Giovanni Battista Di Bella, a member of his gang under the pseudonym of Piazza, was arrested during a raid by law enforcement officers during the Prohibition era. A hundred thousand dollars worth of bottles of whiskey were seized. The bottles were found in Di Bella's olive oil warehouse in Brooklyn. Schirò was linked to Di Bella. In fact, he was his best man at his wedding in 1912. On the 12th of September 1922, Di Bella's brother Salvatore was also arrested and subsequently convicted for the murder of the 17-year-old Gutman Diamond. The boy, a Western Union employee, died by mistake in place of another smuggler. In the 1920s, Salvatore Maranzano, born in Castellammare del Golfo, son-in-law of a mafia boss from Trapani, joined the Schirò's gang. Maranzano backed Schirò by creating a vast smuggling network in Dutchess County, New York, along with a racket aimed at printing and distributing counterfeit documents to be distributed to Italian smuggling into the United States. Joseph Bonanno, 
in his autobiography, described Skilo as easygoing with little backbone. He also wrote about von Bonventre, who during Prohibition developed a widespread smuggling activity, so much so that he affirmed, besides Skilo, Bonventre was probably the richest of the gang. After the murder of Salvatore d'Aquila, Joe Masseria began to exert pressure on the mafia gangs to receive sums of money as a form of submission. Masseria, however, was accused of having orchestrated in the 1913 murders of Gaspar Milazzo in Detroit and Gaetano Reina in the Bronx. Schiro tried to replicate with Masseria the neutrality strategy with which he had faced D'Aquila. This was strenuously opposed by Salvatore Maranzano and the Buffalo boss Stefano Magadino. Masseria speciously claimed that Schiro had committed a transgression and demanded $10,000 and his resignation as head of his mafia crime family. Schiro obeyed. Shortly after, Vito Bonventre was assassinated in his home on July the 15th, 1930. At that point, Maranzano was elected as leader of the Mafia families. And from there, a conflict with Masseria and his allies began. This was known as the Castellamarese War. Schiro after having abandoned his role at the summit of the family in 1930, returned to Italy, settling in his old hometown of Camporeale in Sicily. He renounced his US citizen at the American consulate of Palermo on October 14, 1949, and died in Camporeale on April 29, 1957.